explanation by this a priori theory, he states explicitly in the first quotation made from his treatise in the previous chapter. It cannot be too often repeated. You may observe that allowed by philosophers, and it besides pretty obvious of itself that nothing is ever really present in the mind but its perceptions or impressions and ideas, and that external objects become known to us only by those perceptions they occasion. To hate, to love, to hate, to feel, to see, all this is nothing but to perceive. Hume, in agreement with what is universally allowed by philosophers, interprets this statement in a sensationalist sense. In accordance with this sense, an impression is nothing else than a particular instance of the mind's awareness of the L.J. Niverson, which may either be simple or may be a manner of meaning of many simple universals. For Hume, meaning, loving, thinking, feeling, are nothing but perceptions derivate from these fundamental impressions. A priori sensationalist dogma, which found Hume's discoveries in the realm of experience. It is probable that this dogma was in Locke's mind since the earlier portion of his essay. But Locke was not seeking consistency with any a priori dogma. He also finds in experience ideas with characteristics which determine whether this or that particular existence. Such inconsistency with their dogma shocks empiricists, who refuse to admit experience, and make it an unashamed and avoid of their race or are to be ascribed to particular existence whereby the constitutions of other particulars are conditioned. Correlatively, he holds that the constitutions of particular existence must be described so as to exhibit. From Descartes to Kant, 147. Their T capacities for being conditioned by such T powers in other particulars. He also holds that all qualities have in some sense a relational element in them. Perhaps, though Locke is not a man, the element in the world is illustrated in the following passage. PTV side, there is scarce any particular thing existing, which, in some of its simple ideas, does not communicate with the greater, and in others with a less, number of particular beings. To 
Kulak here expresses the notion of an identity between two simple ideas in the form of a T communication, between the particular existence which possess the common quality. This passage also illustrates Locke's habit of employing the term Tidate in a sense other than particular content of an act of awareness. Finally, Locke's notion of the passage of time is that something is T perpetually perishing. If he had grasped the notion that the actual entity T perishes in the passage of time, so that no actual succession. Free here, as elsewhere, Locke's neglect of ultimate questions revenges itself upon him. Nothing can make the various parts of his essay mutually consistent. He never revises the substance quality categories, YHICH remain presupposed throughout his essay. In the first two books of the essay, of ideas setting which is difficult to conciliate with the sensationalist doctrine of the preceding book. He concentrates upon the doctrine of lost earlier books, the philosophy of Organi, and concentrates upon that of the later books in the essay.
any exemplification of that species. But feeling of the entities which are primarily compatible or incompatible. All other usages of these terms are derivative. The words real and potential are, in this exposition, taken in senses which are antithetical. In their primary senses, they qualify the eternal object.
of organism in birth to order, and conceives the thought as a constituent operation in the creation of the occasional thinker. The thinker is the final end whereby there is the thought. In this inversion we have the final contrast between a philosophy of substance and a philosophy of organism. The operations of an organism are directed towards the organism as a subject, and are not directed from the organism as a 
subject. The operations are directed from antecedent organisms into the immediate organism. They are vectors. In that they convey the many 229J things into the constitution of the single superject. The creative process is rhythmic. It swings from the publicity of many things to the individual privacy, and it swings back from the private individual to the publicity of the objectified individual. The former swing is dominated by the final cause, which is the ideal, and the latter swing is dominated by the efficient cause, T which is actual. Section IV from the point of view of the philosophy of organism, the credit must be given to Hume that he emphasized the process inherent in the fact of being a mind. His analysis of that process is faulty in its details. It was bound to be so, Beacons, with Locke, he misconceived his problem to be the analysis of mental operations. He should have conceived it as the analysis of operations constituent of actual entities. He would then have found mental operations in their proper place. Kant followed Hume in this misconception, and was thus led to balance the world upon thought oblivious to the scanty supply of thinking. But HNME, Kant, and the philosophy of organism agree that the task of the critical reason is the analysis of constructs, and construction is process. Hume's analysis of the construct which constitutes a mental occasion is Impressions of sensation, ideas of impressions of sensation, impressions of reflection, ideas of impressions of reflection. This analysis may be found obscurely in Locke. But Hume exhibits it as an orderly process, and then endeavors and fails to express in terms of it our ordinary beliefs, in which he shares. For subsequent empiricists the pleasure of the dogma has overcome the metaphysical rule of evidence, that we must bow to those presumptions, which, in despite of criticism, we still employ for the regulation of our lives. Such presumptions are imperative in experience. Rationalism is the search for the coherence of such presumptions. Hume, in his series of ideas and of impressions, derivates from impressions of sensation, I am. Implicitly allows R230 that the building up of experience is a process of addition to original data. The philosophy of organism, in this respect, agrees with Hume. It disagrees with Hume as to the proper characterization of THC primary data. In Hume's philosophy the primary impressions are char. Actorized in terms of universals, e.g., in the first section of his treatise he. 152. Discussions and Applications. Refers to the color, red, as an illustration. This is also the doctrine of the first two books of Locke's essay. Within Locke's